next is the standard enthalpy of combustion that is the amount of heat released now we will not write absorbed because you know combustion is again always an exothermic process when one mole of a compound so condition is that there must be one mole of a compound is completely burned in excess supply of air or oxygen under standard conditions as combustion is always exothermic so it is always negative for example the enthalpy of combustion of ethanol that is minus 1368 kilojoule per mole similarly the enthalpy of combustion of carbon now this carbon is actually graphite its enthalpy of combustion is minus 393.7 kilojoule per mole if it were diamond here then this value will also change but this particular case is for graphite and the enthalpy of combustion of hydrogen is 285.58 kilojoule per mole now listen very carefully that these two equations look at these two equations very carefully the first equation is also the enthalpy of formation of co2 and in second equation it is also the enthalpy of formation of water because one mole of compound is formed from the respective elements so the enthalpy of combustion of carbon that is also the enthalpy of formation of co2 in the same case the enthalpy of combustion of hydrogen that is also the enthalpy of formation of water so both these they are same so what is the importance of the enthalpy of combustion the enthalpy of combustion is used to find the calorific value of food or a fuel now what is calorific value calorific value is the amount of energy released when the unit amount or unit volume of a food or fuel is completely burned and calorific value is calculated through enthalpy of combustion and enthalpy of combustion is measured practically by using bomb calorimeter which is an example of the constant volume calorimeter the next one is enthalpy of solution which is shown with the symbol delta is not as well it might be positive or negative because the solution formation is both sometimes it is endothermic and sometimes it is exothermic in this case the one mole of solute is dissolved in so much solvent now look at this very carefully that the amount of solute is mentioned it must be one mole but the amount of solvent is not mentioned rather we have written so much solvent how much solvent that it must result in the infinite dilute solution when you take one mole of a solute suppose 342 g of the sugar and you dissolve it in water some energy will be released or absorbed there must be there will be some energy change that will be detected by using the calorimeter now after preparing this solution you keep on adding water in that solution when you will keep on adding water the enthalpy will be changed gradually and it will be detected by using the calorimeter but a stage will come a stage will reach when you will further dilute the solution and there will be no detectable heat change in that case we have prepared the we say that we have prepared the infinite dilute solution in infinite dilute solution the usually the ratio between solute and solvent is one ratio 800 to 1000 mean if there is one part of the solute there will be 800 to 1000 parts of the solvent and when we have prepared the infinite dilute solution now the further dilution will not result in any detectable heat change if there will be any change that will not be detected by using the calorimeter now why the enthalpy of solution is very important because if the enthalpy of solution is positive solubility of that substance is directly proportional to temperature if the enthalpy of solution of a substance is negative its solubility will vary inversely with temperature and if the enthalpy of solution is zero then that is the ideal solution and in case of ideal solutions the solubility is always independent of temperature so in this sense the enthalpy of solution that is very important for us